Hello and welcome back. My name is Richard Ellingworth and I make videos on stuff and upload them to YouTube. Today I am talking about a short trip I made to Burnley with my cousin and members of the Northampton Ramblers. Burnley is a town in northwest England in the county of Lancashire, about 21 miles north of Manchester. Burnley has been around for at least 700 years. After the Norman Conquest, it was a farming community with links to Clitheroe, which was at that time a more important settlement than Burnley. Weaving started in the middle of the 18th century, and the Burnley loom was considered to be one of the best in the world. The Leeds and Liverpool Canal arrived in 1796, proving to be a huge boost to the local economy, allowing goods and raw materials to be transported with ease. The arrival of the East Lancashire Railway Company's extension from Accrington in 1848 also helped. During the Industrial Revolution, Burnley was one of the largest producers of cotton in the world. Textile production continued into the 20th century, but started to decline after the First World War. Burnley also has a long history in the manufacturing, engineering and coal mining industries. Recent years have been difficult ones for Burnley. Hapton Valley Colliery closed in 1981 and Queen Street Mill in 1982. I should say that I am 56, so the 1980s are recent years for me. Burnley Engineering Products closed in 1992, Prestige in 1997 and Michelin in 2002. The Shop Direct call centre also closed in 2010. Gardner Aerospace, who made parts for the Eurofighter Typhoon, closed in 2011. Surviving companies situated in Burnley include Safran Air Cell, Unison Engine Components, AMS Neve, TRW Automotive, and Futar Botanico. The headquarters of the original factory shop is also in Burnley. According to Wikipedia, the name Burnley is derived from Brunli, meaning meadow by the river Brun. In the 13th century, it was also known as Bromley, then Brunley, and then Bramley. Before setting off, we had breakfast at the Brewers' Fair next door to the hotel, which lies right next to the Leeds and Liverpool Canal, and not far from the River Brune, which gives Burnley its name. Interestingly, or not, Collins English Dictionary's definition of the word fair, spelt with a Y, is a pseudo-archaic spelling of fair, that's F-A-R-E. I'm guessing this is meant to mean a range of food and drink. Cambridge University Press just describes it as an old-fashioned spelling, but I suspect nobody ever spelled it that way until modern times. Also, as a fully paid-up grammar Nazi, shouldn't there be an apostrophe in Brewers somewhere? But I digress. Before we left, I took this photo of a heron perched on a weir just beyond the edge of the hotel car park. Then we all piled into cars and headed off for the village of Barley, or Barley with Wheatley as it is sometimes known. Here a robin posed for my camera before we all had our boots on. From here we set off west-southwest, eventually passing Lower Ogden Reservoir. At this point we joined the Pendle Way and shortly afterwards past the Upper Ogden Reservoir. Then, after heading slightly further west, we started to climb steadily northwards. Eventually, as it gradually got windier, we reached the summit of Pendle Hill at a height of 557 metres. Having ticked that off, we then followed the Pendle Way a little further to the north, where it turned sharply in a south-southeasterly direction. It descends fairly rapidly before becoming flatter, leading us back to the village of Barley. Here we visited the Barley Mo pub, where they serve very good food. Not the cheapest, but worth it. 
Having refuelled, we then headed off in a northeasterly direction, passing to the east of Lower Black Moss Reservoir and then, predictably, Upper Black Moss Reservoir. On the way, we passed a track that leads into Aitkin Wood, which contains a sculpture trail. This must be an example of what is on show, but we didn't head that way. Eventually, we reached Mountain Farm, which we circled around in a clockwise direction. I was busy snapping photos of sheep. I think my Google timeline went AWOL at this point, but I think we then ended up at Briarcliff Farm before heading back southwest and picking up the Pendle Way again, heading west into Bali. <laughs> I was awake fairly early, but the sun was up, so I went for a little wander along the Leeds and Liverpool Canal, and also the River Brune. I shot some video, starting with this squirrel on the edge of the car park. Today we drove off to Clitheroe to the northwest of Burnley and then caught a bus to Gisburn which is just over seven miles to the northeast of Clitheroe. From there we followed the Ribble Way along the banks of the River Ribble back to Clitheroe. Wikipedia says that the Ribble may be a combination of the Welsh re meaning great and pol meaning upland stream. After leaving Gisburn, we passed over a railway bridge with a view of the Gisburn Tunnel on the Ribble Valley Line. The line runs from Manchester, Victoria to Helifield, where it joins the Settle Carlisle Railway, but most passenger trains only go as far as Clitheroe. The tunnel is 144 metres long and was opened in 1880. It was built because Lord Ribblesdale refused to allow the railway to cross his estate, Gisburn Park in case it frightened his horses. The solution was a cut and cover tunnel. The castellated entrances were Lord Ribblesdale's idea. He refused compensation from the railway company and asked that the money be spent building the castellations. After walking for less than two miles we turned south away from the river up a steep path and along a track to Longholm Row here we discovered some woolly-faced sheep and a pony with similar problems. Heading even further away from the river, we recrossed the railway and then, shortly afterwards, we crossed it back again. Then we passed what I think is part of Gisburn Coates Hall, which is Grade 2 listed and dates back as far as the 17th century. This stone circle was a bit of a mystery. It doesn't look all that old and indeed it isn't. It seems the circle and some of the other oddities nearby are all to do with the Beet Herder Festival, which takes place every year in July. Looks like quite a big deal if the crowds are running to go by, which is hard to believe on a slightly misty day in early March. Now the real star of the show comes into view, the chimney of the Hanson Cement Works near Clitheroe. Handy landmark, but it's not all good. More on this later. 
Anyway, before long we arrived at Sawley. Sawley has the remains of a Cistercian Abbey and also the Spread Eagle Inn, which serves some excellent food and drink. They even have a menu for dogs. Not sure why it is called the Spread Eagle Inn, and Wikipedia wasn't much help, so that's me knackered. However, there are several other pubs with the same name elsewhere, and it may come from a heraldic eagle that appeared on imported bottles of wine from the Rhineland. I don't know. Sawley also has a rather spiffing bridge crossing over the Ribble. The present bridge is probably a little over 200 years old, although some parts may be older. Also, when I looked back to the northeast, I saw Sawley Hall, a privately owned Grade II listed mansion. Confusingly, there is another Sawley near Ripon in North Yorkshire, and it too has a Sawley Hall. A bit of road walking up a hill followed, and then a stile on the left, which took us back down to the northern bank of the Ribble. We followed the river until we reached Grindleton Bridge, which carries the road from Grindleton on the north bank to Chatburn on the south. The Ribble Way crosses the river here and then doubles back on the southern bank before continuing west-southwest, so we didn't actually visit Chatburn. However, did you know that the film Whistle Down the Wind, starring Hayley Mills and Alan Bates, was filmed in the area? Some of the children from Chatburn Primary School appeared in the film. Hayley Mills is the mother of Crispian Mills, the lead singer and guitarist in the band Cooler Shaker. Nothing to do with Chatburn, but I thought you should know. We were now walking between the river and the Bankfield Quarry, and the handsome cement Ribblesdale works lies just west of the quarry, with the tall chimney very much in evidence. I found an article from the Lancashire Telegraph which reports on the demolition of a chimney on the site in 2009, so I suppose this must be a replacement. Much as I like the way the chimney punctuates the skyline, it may not be as harmless as it seems. The chimney is only supposed to release steam into the atmosphere, but another Lancashire Telegraph report from 2021 has eyewitness reports of black smoke and claims that nitrogen dioxide is being released. Furthermore, back in 2000, Hanson Cement, or Castle Cement as it was then known, were fined a total of £45,000 plus £74,600 in costs for releasing what is believed to be sulphur dioxide into the air. High levels of asthma have also been recorded in the area, dating back even earlier. From here, we followed the bank of the Ribble back to Clitheroe, passing Bradford Bridge and Brungley Bridge. I saw another goosander, a heron and a little egret. Shortly before Brungley Bridge, we were diverted along a path away from the river, which took us through trees punctuated by various sculptures. Eventually, we passed through a recently built estate to the railway station car park, where we recovered the cars before driving back to the hotel. However, I should mention this, which is Wado Hall on the northern bank. Built in Tudor times by the wonderfully named Tempest family, it passed through various hands until, in 1928, it was purchased by the Girl Guides Association, who still run it today. Wow! Before we reached the car park, we could see Clitheroe Castle on the horizon. There is some doubt, but it was probably built in the 12th century and was sold to the people of Clitheroe in 1920. It's still privately owned, it's not an English heritage site. I must take a close look someday. <laughs> The plan for this day was to drive to the village of Waikola, hype I punite dit correctly, and then walk back to Burnley. 
Wycola lies a little over eight miles to the northeast of Burnley, and the name Wycola is probably Old English, meaning dairy farm by the Alders. What you see here is Wycola Hall. This is the inspiration for Ferndean Manor in Charlotte Bronte's novel Jane Eyre. It was built in 1550 by Piers Hartley and was in use until 1818 when it was dismantled and recycled as a cotton mill. The last owner, Henry Owen Cunliffe, inherited the hall from a distant uncle on condition that he adopted the Cunliffe name and got himself an education. Sadly, he went into debt and was forced to give up the hall. There are also a number of bridges that cross the Wycola Beck. These, like the hall, are Grade II listed monuments. Wycola can also be seen in the 1970 film The Railway Children. Then we follow the Bronte Way in a south southeasterly direction until we reach the lower slopes of Boldsworth Hill where we turn to follow a west-south-westerly path heading for Upper Coldwell Reservoir. However, before we got there, the Bronte Way heads southwest. About 300 metres southeast of the reservoir, we came across this. Apparently, it is all that remains of a farmhouse that was built by one Robert Parker in 1672. The house was dismantled in 1886 to allow the reservoirs to be built, but they left this doorway behind. Carrying on southwest, we eventually arrived at Thursden, but not before pausing to photograph some more sheep. <laughs> then walked uphill along the road to the point where the Pennine Bridleway meets the road where we stopped briefly for coffee and snacks. Then we headed south climbing to a height of about 380 metres before slowly descending to the southwest crossing Extwistle Moor to reach Swindon Water with views over Swindon Reservoir slightly to our right. After a bit more uphill, we came down to a T-junction with the Pennine Bridleway and turned right to head east along Gorpel Road. The last kilometre and a half ends at the village of Warsthorn and is perfectly straight. This is believed to be a Roman road that passed through Burnley on the way to a fort at Ribchester. This Grade II listed building goes by the name of Jackson's Farmhouse and was built around 1600. The wall surrounding the garden is also listed. Worsthorn, or Worthest Thorn, as it was known in 1202, means thorn tree of a man named Worth, and was the birthplace of Ron Greenwood, the football player and manager. After a pint at the Crooked Billet, we headed slightly north and west to join the Burnley Way, which follows Swindon Water until it joins the River Brun. The Bronte Way then runs between the river and an industrial estate. They make sustainable packaging. It then passes under the A6114 and shortly afterwards the Leeds and Liverpool Canal, not far from our hotel. And that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then like, subscribe and click that little bell thing. Whatever. Bye for now.